38 called Gaslight. And it's about a woman and her husband really slowly manipulates her into believing she's going crazy. <laughs> and really, <laughs> that's what you've been doing to me for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, going insane. And, you know, anybody who's been working with you this long must be insane. <laughs> that must be me. The film was nominated for seven Academy Awards, including wow. Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Screenplay. It won two Best Actress and Best Production Design. And the 1944 version starred, like you said, Ingrid Bergman mm -hmm. and uh, um, some others. And also 18-year-old Angela Lansbury. Oh, right. Yeah, in her yeah. Oscar-nominated screen debut sure, wow. supporting actress. So great movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And a very popular song in 1944 called Don't Fence Me In. This is uh, Bing Crosby and the Andrews Sisters. Let's see if you know this one. Oh, give oh, sure. me land, Do lots you? of land, and under starry skies Sires above, don't fence don't me in. Fence there it is. In. You're ruining it, Carl. <laughs> Let me ride so, I have a knack of doing that. Uh, of ruining music? Yeah. Nah, it's good. You know, it has a different feel to it. It was written in 1934. Now listen to this. With music yeah. by Cole Porter and Bing Crosby and the Andrews Sisters recorded in 44 without ever having seen or heard the song. So they entered the studio. Within 30 minutes, they had completed the recording and it sold more than a million copies. You know why? It topped the Billboard charts for eight weeks. You know why? Uh, I'm afraid to ask. He had to go golfing. He had. He was very busy. He had thirty minutes, very and he was out. Enjoyed golfing a lot. Well, he's probably like, "Listen, I got thirty minutes to knock this thing go. out. Let's do it." I got, <laughs> well, he did I have a great a tea job. Time. That's right. Well, he did a good job. Yeah. So sometimes, All right, very good. Yes. <laughs> and then our Abbott and Costello show is from nineteen forty four too. So more nineteen forty four yep, coming your way. Facts. All right. Uh, we have a text in line three one two nine eight one. 7200. We love getting your texts. I do. I appreciate all your texts. I read them aloud to Carl. He's not a great reader, but he's a good listener. Right. <laughs> well, I was always listening to these classic radio shows, you know. And now you're listening to me. I'd go to, to school and I, I could, and I was, when she was, uh, you know, the she, teacher. Was well, I had mostly female teachers when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to teach me to read. I was thinking about the classic radio shows. I, I didn't want, were. I wasn't Back paying attention. Back when you were like five years old wasn't learning to read. wasn't paying attention. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, do text us. And by the way, folks, don't forget, we have five shows free to you. You can get Suspense, uh, Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Jack Benny. Jack Benny, Gunsmoke, Gunsmoke and Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> five, five classic radio shows digitally remastered by the great Mike Costello. They are waiting for you to digitally download. If you put your email in the website which is 100radioshows.com. If you go there, you can put your email in, and they're instantly sent to you. And you can Bluetooth them in your car and listen to them. This is our way of thanking you for tuning into our show. Yeah. Five shows for you, free, no strings attached. Go to 100radioshows.com. Now, when you're there, there are hundreds more radio shows available for purchase. If you want to purchase them, make sure that you use the promo code RADIO at checkout. And it'll uh, discount your order by 70%. And people are uh, really liking that. It's another way of thanking you for listening to the show. 70% discount by using the promo code radio at 100radioshows.com. All right. Speaking of one of the best radio shows from the golden age of radio, Suspense. You know, CBS, Lisa, had a weekly series back in the early 1940s called Forecast. And the reason why they had this show was because if they had proposed ideas for, let's say, a comedy or a mystery or a Western or whatever, they would play one episode on this series called Forecast. And then people would vote and send in, yeah, we like that or no, we didn't like They had some way of gauging the audience if they liked it or not. And if they did, then they'd turn it into a regular radio series. Kind of a unique idea. Right. show called Forecast. Now, in 1940, CBS aired an episode of Suspense, a proposed kind of mystery series. And at the microphone was Alfred Hitchcock to direct. He not only, you know, directed the show, he was on the show along with Herbert Marshall and Edmund Gwen. They starred in an episode of The Lodger, which is a radio adaptation of the 1926 
film that Alfred Hitchcock directed, of course, about Jack the Ripper. Um, it went over very well. In fact, we have that episode. We'll air it one time. I have a great quality episode of it. So nearly two years later in 1942, CBS moved forward with suspense, but without Alfred Hitchcock. He was not available to direct the series. That was kind of the idea. We'll have Alfred Hitchcock come sure. in, direct it. So they they uh, had a host by the name of the Man in Black, and at first it was Joseph Kearns played the Man in Black, and there were top writers of the uh, of the era along with the best movie stars. So suspense always had great movie stars in the lead roles. Now the most popular episode from suspense, do you remember what it was? Uh, not on a country road. No, sorry, well, wrong, sorry wrong number. Sorry, wrong number with uh, Andorra. Lu- yeah, with Agnes <laughs> Moorhead. That was aired eight times. They made a uh, a film of that movie in 1948. Now, you would think Agnes Moorhead would star in the film, but no, it was Barbara Stanwyck. Folks, if you've never seen Sorry, Wrong Number, the film with Barbara Stanwyck, Definitely watch it. Now, Suspense had a 20-year run. It won numerous awards of excellence, including the Peabody Award. But here's something really, really interesting. In 1981, way after the series was off the air, a company put out an LP record of the hour-long suspense drama Donovan's Brain that starred Orson Welles, a sci-fi drama, it's two-part, two-half hours. They put out an hour, the full hour on an album 37 years after it aired, and it won a Grammy. Mm. Won a Grammy for Best Spoken Word. I'll tell you what. That's the power of these classic yep, radio and these shows. these shows live on, and that's why we're playing them here on WGN today, that's all these right. years later. Yeah, there's nothing like these classic radio shows, and most of them made the transition yep. to television. So you not only hear them here on WGN, but then you can see the video uh, partners of those uh, shows, the video versions on Antenna TV for most of the shows that we air. And now this is called The Defense Rests. It stars Alan Ladd from March 9, 1944. Uninterrupted, here is Suspense. Roma Wines presents Suspense. Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud! Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the man in black, here to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, we bring you as star, Mr. Alan Ladd. In the character Mr. Ladd assumes with us tonight, he reveals the thoughts and through them the dramatic story of a young man on trial for the crime of murder. But before we take you to the scene of our drama, let's imagine ourselves for a moment in flower-garlanded Bermuda. Seated on the terrace of the exclusive Coral Beach and Tennis Club, a party of Bermudians and Americans are taking turns, each paying compliments to the delights of the other's native land. An American has just praised the famed Easter lilies of Bermuda. Then a Bermudian tops him with something like this. Among great American delights, he says, one of my favorites is right here on our table. It's this splendid wine we're all enjoying. Bermuda imports it from the justly renowned wine districts of California. It is your internationally esteemed Roma wine. Yes, and Americans themselves have certainly not overlooked the great and enjoyable qualities of these fine Roma wines. Proof is, Roma wines are America's largest selling wines. Such outstanding popularity must mean, here are wines that are more taste-delighting, more satisfying in their richness and fine wine quality. Yet with all that as your reward for specifying Roma wines, you'll be amazed and delighted to hear your dealer say, Roma wines cost only pennies a glass. That's because here in America you pay no high import duty, or long void shipping charges for these fine Roma California wines. So, why put off this taste treat another day? Be sure to ask for R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now with the defense rests, and with the performance of our star, Alan Ladd, 
as defendant Robert Tasker, supported by John McIntyre as the noted criminal lawyer, Max Krager. We again hope to keep you in suspense. The People versus Robert Tasker. The defendant charged under the indictment with murder in the first degree. Is counsel for the defense prepared to proceed? I am, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Krager. <clears throat> Your Honor, if the court please, I think it's fitting that for a moment I should speak openly to Your Honor and to the jury. The matter which has, albeit indirectly, nonetheless a substantial bearing on this case. I refer, of course, to the rather unique relationship existing between myself and the defendant, Robert Tasker. It's true that my interest in him and in his fate is far greater than the normal interest of a lawyer and his client. It's true that that interest might reasonably be described as it has been so many times as fatherly. And yet I ask your honor and the gentlemen of the jury to think of me in all fairness and without bias simply as a lawyer defending his client. It needs no expatiation on legal or practical ethics to demonstrate that I did not believe in my My name is Robert Tasker. I'm sitting in a courtroom on trial for murder. As Mr. Krager, my lawyer, stands there now telling the judge and the jury about me and about him, I can't help thinking that if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be here today. And thinking what irony it is, too. Because Mr. Krager is the only friend I've ever had in the world. I'm an, an ex-con. My sentence was for ten years. After I'd been there about a year, I began to write just short stories, little things. I had lots of time. Finally, I sent one to a magazine and they published it. Mr. Krager happened to read it. He wrote to me. Then he came to see me. He remembered my case and he, he said he'd try to help me. Then one day I was called to the warden's office. Hello, Robert. Hello, Mr. Krager. Robert, I've got some good news for you. I've got your parole. You're free. Well, you happy? I'm sure. It's just that I still don't quite believe it. Yeah, well, it's official to ask him. You know, your papers. Papers? That'll make everything easy, won't it, Warden? Passport to a brilliant future. Ex-con. Well, Robert, I know it's going to be a little hard to adjust at first, but there's a job in my office that I would like Thanks, to... Thanks, Mr. Krager. But I don't want charity. Even from you. It isn't charity, Robert. I need a clerk in my office or I wouldn't have offered you the job. You don't have to stay if you don't want to, but you'll be doing me a favor if you try it. Well, I guess I owe you at least one favor. Uh, well, Taskham, goodbye and good luck. Just remember that what's happened up here is water over the dam. Don't hold any grudges. I don't hold any grudges, Warden. There's one man I hate, that's all. A man you hate, Robert? Oh, I'd say you're kidding about it. His name is Arthur Hines, and I hate him. Simple as that. Well, forget it, son. Hines was D.A. then. He was just doing a job, that's all. He had nothing against you. Yeah, he was doing a job all right. Robert, you mustn't feel that way. You get along with Hines all right. Get along with him? In the office. Didn't I tell you? Arthur Hines is my new partner. Well, it certainly threw me up for a second to hear I was going to work side by side with that... But, well, I figured they were right and that I shouldn't hold grudges, and I made up my mind to play ball. The work wasn't hard, and I was able to do some writing on the side. Mr. Krager always encouraged me in that, and Peggy helped me a lot, too. She helped me to believe in myself. All that time, I never saw Mr. Hines. He was out of town or something. And then one day, he came back. I was nervous at the idea of seeing him, but I thought I was over my resentment then. He... 
He was in his office with someone. He'd come in the private entrance. I was out in the inner room with Peggy by the switchboard when I heard the commotion. You're going to give it to me. No, don't you understand the English language? No. Guy, you're a liar. No, you get out of here. Get out. Don't give me that, Heinz. You've either got it or you know I don't know anything has. about it, and I don't want to know. Don't you think I got enough trouble now? 